Eventually, you'll tell us something about mobile OS interface development and also make some announcements. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think I would uh, start from uh, announcements of um, two East European conferences, which I would like to invite anyone interested in open source software and able to find himself somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, one is a Linux Vacation Eastern Europe conference, um, um, uh, which I am representing as a member of the organization board. It takes uh, place in Belarus, uh, now two times a year, starting from the year 2005. And uh, this winter, it will take place at the middle of February. I hope you see it um, on screen. And uh, the summer variant of this conference takes place um, at the end of June, beginning of July. Uh, well, uh, it usually takes place somewhere in Belarusian forest. Yeah, surely. Um, participants are transported to the place of a conference. Well, they can go by cars or by bar or by bicycles, of course, but uh, organizers are providing uh, rented buses. Well, uh, the winter variant takes place near Minsk and summer variant takes place near Grodno and, well, uh, the transportation is from Minsk, the capital of Belarus. And, uh, well, despite the name, the conference is dedicated to more general open source related topics than on Linux. Um, it's named after Linux just for historical reasons. And the other conference I would like to mention is uh, so-called Fos Lviv, which takes part in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is a good country because it's easier uh, to get in from the point of view of getting visa, you know. And, well, uh, they didn't update their site, but uh, the next one will take place in April. By the way, uh, both sites are made on the same engine, specially developed in Ruby on Rails for open source conferences. Uh, if someone would be interested in participating or in using it for some um, uh, activity of such type, at the bottom of the site you can get the link to the engine code. Well, and now let us start the presentation about the evolution of the mobile OS interfaces. Well, um, first of all, I should mention that um, there are different versions what to uh, call a mobile device or even graphic user interface based mobile device. And uh, today evening we will suppose that a mobile device is pocket sized or has similar size, almost pocket size maybe, and it may have a, it may have a touch screen. And the other necessary feature of mobile devices we are speaking about is the possibility to install applications. So smartphones are supposed to be such devices and dumb phones or oscilloscopes, portable oscilloscopes of course, or digital cameras are known. It will little bit, uh, it will make um, the row of devices little bit more narrow, of course. It will be easier. So, the first 
uh, such devices uh, have appeared as a concept. Yeah, you see the date, 1968, a really uh, old concept, you see. Uh, we even had no uh, workstation with graphical interface at that time. And, well, the concept included some graphic interface, a software which should be written in small talk, the first object-oriented language, and uh, <laughs> It featured practically endless battery. It's easy to uh, think out a concept. And, well, designers of such concepts are not bonded with some physical problems, yeah? And it was intended uh, to be used by children. Well, it's interesting that first graphical workstation uh, worked out in uh, uh, Xerox Laboratories was uh, initially thought out as the implementation of this DynaBook, but of course it was not a tablet with a keyboard, but a very large box with a lot of additions. And uh, this concept didn't find its way to reality for a long time, as you can think. And in 1980s, we already had personal digital assistances, which were looking like calculators. This is a good example, known as Psion Organizer 2. Was in, uh, oh, sorry, 8-bit processor, 16 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, some operating system was already there. It was single tasking operating system, but well, you see the screen. Multitasking is not a question here. And it had database. It had some applications to make print salt applications to make appointments, uh, alarm. Uh, it allowed to run programs in so-called OPL basic. And a uh, user could uh, insert some extension cartridges. It's really interesting feature because uh, these cartridges were um, providing either software, additional software, either additional hardware. At this time, there was no difference between a printer and word processor. And of course, you could insert some one cartridge. Mm. Well, uh, the first Really, a uh, mobile device we are speaking about appeared in 1989. It was uh, the same company, Psion PLC. It uh, created so-called Epoch 16 operating system, which was intended to be used uh, in uh, the family of SIBO pocket computers. And, well, these SIBO pocket computers were looking like very small notebooks. You see two screenshots. Uh, it's really interesting that this uh, interface didn't support mouse, joystick, or touch screen. It was uh, controlled by keyboard only, but the design was so, uh, so good that user didn't notice that uh, there is no mouse or something like this. Um, but I have to mention that screen was not very tall and there were no internet browser at this time. So there was no problem to travel and click hyperlinks. In 1999, we have the first device of a different form factor, which looks not like a um, notebook, but like a paper notebook instead. Uh, it had, um, well, a so-called Go Corporation created Penpoint OS and several uh, devices for this operating system. You see a photo of one of such devices on the bottom right. Uh, and the screenshot, well, uh, 
A lot of features which are nowadays are used in touch-oriented operating systems have appeared just in 1991. You see, uh, controlling gestures. Well, for example, you should uh, draw a circle to edit some field or text, or uh, draw a cross to delete something, or uh, you, sh you even could um, to use a long press to initiate drag and drop. Yeah, in this, in this very first device. And it already had layout manager uh, of the interface which uh, supported auto rotation of the screen. And it's known as the first PDA operating system. 1992, Microsoft noticed a new segment and created a fantastic piece of software known as Windows for Pen Computing. It had on-screen keyboard, but uh, this keyboard looked uh, great, but it didn't, sometimes it could not appear for unknown reasons, but when it could appear, it looked great. You will see it on next slide. Uh, this um, strange uh, operating system also supported auto-rotation of the screen and handwriting recognition, which, well, <clears throat> You will see. But in practice, it was uh, the same Windows 3.1 with some additional features. Uh, here you see the screenshot. Uh, on the bottom is keyboard. I am so fond of. It even has a numpad, <laughs> you see? <laughs> well, um, it was not easy to press but these tiny buttons with stylus, but, but well, user, but keyboard still was working better than handwriting recognition. Uh, here on screenshot, um, someone tried to write, I can write just here, and system even recognized here. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that uh, no dedicated devices were created for this Penwin, but instead it was used on device, it was intended for use on devices for uh, pen point OS. I am not sure whether it was used uh, on them for some long period or not. Um, 1993, Apple also decided to enter the market and created its first uh, line, or first and maybe last, line of PDS. Uh, they added sound feedback for widgets. And, um, well, other features were not very different from the pen point to us. Uh, but, well, the one uh, valuable addition, which was later used by a lot of um, companies, is uh, the bottom row of icons. As these icons were always the same, there were no need to draw them on the screen. Instead, they were drawn on a small plastic stripe, which were touch sensible. And the device became cheaper just because of that. But, uh, well, the device wasn't very successful, indeed. In 1993, uh, the first smartphone known as the Simon from the IBM. It had some specific version of DOS. Uh, it had no hardware buttons at all. Um, it could work for uh, 30 minutes only. <laughs> I don't know the weight, but well, you can imagine. And um, it cost about $1,100, not uh, bonded to some uh, cell phone operator. And, well, uh, it had only one standalone application. This application cost uh, $3,000 of dollars for the PC and $300 for each device. Uh, if you don't if you want to know what was it, well, it was a synchronization software. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, nobody bought it, but it had 
round corners. It had grid of icons. It had no hardware buttons. <laughs> well, you know what I am thinking about. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. 1994, another funny device. Uh, well, the company was uh, named General Magic. The device was named Magic Cap. Um, it was intended to be controlled uh, by fingers or by stylus. And it used a lot of interesting features like room metaphor, three-dimensional interface, and skeuomorphism. Well, skeuomorph interfaces, uh, well, I, the word skeuomorph means that you are uh, simulating uh, in some instrument the look and feel of some very different instrument. Mm -hmm. In computer interfaces, uh, it usually means that you are trying to simulate some uh, real-world objects without the necessity. You see here, um, well, <clears throat> um, you should touch a real uh, three-dimensional phone to call somebody, or, well, you will see uh, some portion of screenshots on the next slide. The interesting feature, it was the first device with the conception of software servers. The device was rather weak itself from the computation power, and therefore um, some resource-hungry applications um, were placed on standalone servers. And this device uh, should connect to a server to use this application. We don't know what were these applications because these servers are working, working no more. So nobody can tell what was it, but it's known that you should uh, go outside of the building. Uh, you maybe see uh, the photo of the device with some road and skyscrapers. You should go to a nearby skyscraper to use um, some software service which was provided. Mm -hmm. Each company, uh, well, there were only one skyscraper from the ATT Corporation. Um, a lot of screenshots in color. You see um, a corridor and door which were um, dedicated to different applications. And you see even a bookshelf with books which will appear in, well, um, in some of my last uh, slides in a very different interface, a very different device. And the final feature, this device was intended for business users. Of course, nobody wanted it. It was an epic fail, indeed. <coughs> and uh, from that moment, uh, well, it was, uh, <laughs> uh, we had two skeuomorphing interfaces. Microsoft Bob, which was also an, terrible disaster, and from this moment, all ergonomic specialists and usability specialists knew that Skeomorph is killing, well, is killing everything. So Magic App was not successful, and in 1996, Nokia created its first communicator. Uh, communicator uh, means two devices, um, huge mobile phone glued to the <laughs> outside, uh, maybe it's seen on the photo, and uh, uh, some type of notebook inside. And uh, even they usually had two different processors running two different operating systems. Um, well, this, the first one, Nokia 9000, um, it still worked under DOS operating systems with GOS graphical shell. You see a screenshot. And it had a web browser, but still had no mouse, joystick, touchpad, touch point, track point, or touch screen. They had to do something, and the only thing they managed to do is to, well, 
to go through a list of hyperlinks one by one. Next, 1996, Microsoft made more successful attempt uh, to take part in mobile market. It created Windows CE 1.0, uh, intended for devices of the notebook type. Um, you see photo. It copied the look and feel of Windows 95 but with some valuable additions, like uh, menus and tool buttons combined in one panel, for example. And it tried to behave itself like a normal Windows, at least until user will bring it home. Uh, it had Pocket Word, which looked like, pocket, uh, like Word. It had Pocket Excel, which looked almost like normal Excel, and until you play with this device for some time, you will not notice that, well, that's not Word, not Excel at all, and the special software, uh, ActiveSync, converted uh, your documents uh, each time you was transferring them between the handheld uh, and the normal PC. So, um, I will not speak about the feature list of these pocket versions, Okay, but the devices were rather, rather successful. 1996, the same year, uh, appearance of Palm OS. Uh, it was initially created by US robot, robotics company, which uh, were, was producing a very popular modems, and decided also to create a PDA. They bought company which initially created the standalone software for hard handwriting recognition for the Apple Newton. And um, being combined in one company, they created Palm OS and the line of pilot PDAs. Uh, the Palm OS was single tasking, but it had multitasking core. For example, it could place background music could play background music, not for a long time, of course. Mm -hmm. And, well, um, the handwriting was the first successful handwriting in the world, a handwriting recognition, just because uh, some part of the task of recognizing characters, which, well, some part uh, was made by users and not by hardware. Um, I'm not sure whether it's, it can be seen or not, uh, the handwriting area is divided into two parts. One is for digits, other for letters. The left one for letters, right one for digits, and it didn't recognize normal letters. Instead, you should draw a very specific signs. For example, um, well, a vertical line for Latin L, for example, and so on. And only these specific signs were recognized. They were rather simple. Because of that, they were, uh, stable. Uh, there was stable effect of recognition. And users were happy. They could write a letter uh, by some sort of a pencil. And well, um, this device was so popular that Apple killed its Newton uh, line of devices. Just because everybody wanted to buy a little notebook with Windows CE or this uh, palm top, this palm, and well, it was smaller, lighter, cheaper. 1997, uh, Epoch 32, which, well, was once again produced by Psyon Company. It was written from scratch in C++. It had object-oriented uh, application interface, programming interface. Uh, the interface itself was based on a so-called MVC pattern. Programmers know what I'm speaking about. And the implementation was separated from the look and feel of an application. And that, that allowed to create uh, applications uh, for very different devices. 
some keyboard driven, some uh, with only a touch screen. Uh, well, and this uh, was perhaps um, the first was with real multitasking on a portable device. Windows C 2.0 appeared in the same year. They ported uh, NT kernel to a portable device. Uh, so uh, real-time kernel was really great. And it supported a lot of, fe uh, supported a lot of features, including 32-bit color. It was working in, uh, on a lot of hardware platforms. And well, this version was intended for keyboardless handhelds. They tried uh, to eat some part of the um, cake of Palm OS. Mm -hmm. 1998, Psion turned into Symbian. They predicted uh, the leading role of smartphones. They were first who understood it. And uh, Psion became uh, Symbian Limited with shares of Nokia, Ericsson, and Motorola. Uh, they created several operating system families, each for a different type of devices. Well, as you know, uh, this Epoch 32, uh, Epoch 32 was um, very good for this reason. Uh, series 60, uh, we now know this uh, line of operating systems as Series 60, was intended for smartphones. Series 80 was intended for keyboard-driven communicators from Nokia. And there was so-called UIC. Uh, well, it was almost the same like Series 60, but for Sony Ericsson with uh, extended multimedia capabilities and a little bit different approach. Well, the millennium, three main players in the mobile OS market have met the millennium in this state. You see Windows C, still like Windows 90X, until you bring it home and... Ah. Mm, Epoch 32, mm, not a lot of differences. And Palm OS is still a single tasking operating system, still has no normal file system. Uh, still has no normal web browser, but has support of colors, 8-bit only. <laughs> Two free and open source graphic shells appeared somewhere in this time. The Qtopia, perhaps it appeared first. It was a graphic shell for portable digital assistants with Linux based on the KDE, I, uh, KDE project. Uh, the first name was Qt Palm Top Environment. Later it was renamed to Qtopia. It had X window system, Qt widgets, and uh, it was also licensed under JPL and proprietary. Uh, it was able to run desktop applications, and for Linux users, it, it was a key feature. Well, no, uh, no doubt it could because you had X window system and you could recompile everything for the ARM platform. Mostly it was used on uh, Sharp Zauros PDAs. We saw one of such devices today. And, well, a um, little bit later, uh, they created even a phone edition. Three years later, the phone edition can be seen on the bottom right corner. Well, like Symbian, maybe. Nothing special. Um, GPE Pound Top Environment is the uh, very, very similar project from GNOME. Nobody knows where, when did it appear. It's practically impossible um, to find roots. Uh, their old servers have been already dead for some years. Somewhere near 2002, I think. Uh, well, uh, 
it was also not easy to find when Qtopia was started. Nobody remember. So uh, almost the same, but from GNOME, targeted to the same devices. Well, um, and a little bit later, GNOME borrowed some applications developed for this GP on top environment. For example, Empathy um, Instant Messenger. Well, in the period when GNOME was collecting uh, simplified interfaces software, they took it. And uh, this project also had a uh, phone edition, but somewhere in 2006, I think. Windows Mobile 5.0, nothing interesting. Uh, almost no changes. They only changed a collection of icons uh, to better fit their desktop version of operating systems. Well, they tried to embed um, .NET into uh, handhelds. They tried to make some other cosmetic changes, like change the name of the platform, but well, users didn't see any substantial changes. Mm -hmm. Only icons. The other uh, unpredictably popular uh, series of device, especially among geeks, uh, was created by Nokia in 2005. It's so it was so-called internet tablet. It was also Linux-based. I think it was started as a research project somewhere in Nokia. Um, well, the interface were inspi was inspired by Symbian, as you can see on the screenshot. But inside, it had still uh, Debian, uh, well, some distribution derived from Debian, GDK widgets, some GNOME libraries, normal touch screen, and a lot of features uh, other PDI couldn't have. 2007, the Open Mocha and Neo Freerunner phone we have seen today in reality. Well, on the left, we see uh, the one, one of the earliest mock-ups. It looked incredibly, incredibly great, and even interface was, uh, well, very inspiring. It even had some strange round thing in the left bottom corner. Nobody knew what was it intended for, but it looked, it looked great. Um, on the right, we have two real screenshots, not so great, but with the same color scheme. And without this interesting round thing at all, uh, I think that they could not uh, find a real use for it. Well, but what? Ah. Um, some interesting, interesting features. Uh, it was intended to uh, be a free hardware phone, but, well, or at least a phone with free software, but it still had a closed GSM stack and still had some closed source drivers, but it was as open as it was only possible. Uh, of course, it had Linux inside. Of course, it, of course, it could run desktop applications. And it had uh, the first HD screen in the mobile market. You see the DPI ratio, 282. It was really normal. Uh, on scale, screenshots were really large. You see the resolution. And the size of display was less than three inch. Mm? So uh, it was, perhaps it was interesting uh, trying to, uh, well, do something in open office on such tiny screen. The same year, early builds of Android, no, they had no touch screen yet. The interface was somehow borrowed from BlackBerry smartphones, joystick driven. And, well, uh, two screenshots of the bottom are showing uh, some features which very quickly disappeared. One is transparent menus, and the other, well, do you know what is it? 
on the bottom right screenshot? Who guessed? Yes, it's calculator. It's incredible. Yeah, it's Qmorph uh, calculator. It's, it's incredible. Well, um, these screenshots have appeared uh, while the legal ba battle um, in some, somewhere in 2012 or 2011. Uh, nobody published uh, these um, ideas before. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was for internal use only. Um, Moblin is the other operating system which appeared in 2007. Well, it's not uh, targeted for our set of devices, frankly speaking. It was targeted for netbooks mainly, but it um, highly, well, took uh, some sad uh, part in the role of Nokia communicators later, Nokia devices, so we should mention it. Interface based on tops and frames, live frames, well, uh, and from the software point of view, uh, Clutter Window Manager, which now is used in GNOME, GNOME 3, uh, GStreamer, GDK, Mozilla. Not very comfortable, frankly speaking, at least on netbooks. I tried to use it. Mm, tabs. The same year, first iPhone. Uh, it had highly stripped down Mac OS. It had multi-touch feature. In 2008, even the possibility to add applications was added. Yeah. In 2009, they invented clipboard. <laughs> and everybody was surprised a lot. How? You hadn't it before? And in Next year, they uh, added multitasking. And if speaking about the interface, it didn't change a lot uh, all this time. Well, uh, Android SDK, after they saw iPhone, finger-oriented, uh, it implemented uh, synchronization with a lot of Google services. It had normal multitasking. And, well, it had tiles. These tiles were uh, not live tiles. They were only uh, to launch applications, and the look and feel of these tiles was borrowed from the Window Maker Window Manager. Maybe you remember it, no? No one? Mm. I knew. <laughs> well, mm. And uh, the interesting feature was that uh, operating system, mm, well, may kill uh, non-visible graphics applications anytime when a user uh, doesn't contact with them. And it provided some uh, possibility to save data and to load them if the creator of the application would like to. Well, I'm... I suppose it would be better to create swap, but well, it was decision of Google. Okay, um, Palm OS. You see a little bit different background. Uh, in 90.001, they understood that single task and operating system is, well, not good for a new millennium. They bought BIOS operating system, very interested, interesting operating system written in C++ for desktop computers, and they wanted to create a sixth version of Palm OS, codenamed Cobalt. They created it. They uh, copied the interface of their older Palm OS, and nobody wanted to license it to create devices. In 2003, uh, the company divided into two, software and hardware, in 2004, Palm Source, the software part, released and closed this Cobalt and announced Palm OS on Linux, which was supposed to be Linux running some Palm OS applications uh, with built-in emulator. Mm -hmm. um, well, 2006, they bought 
palm name and palm all sources, not they, uh, the other part of this, the hardware variant of Palm, the hardware part of Palm board, and, but immediately uh, they announced that it will not use these sources and they will also migrate to Linux. 2009, uh, nobody uh, was waiting something useful, but they have created a really interesting verbose uh, operating system based on Linux and based on a lot of web technologies. Uh, but at this moment, they ran out of money. They were searching for sponsor, and Hewlett Packard bought them, and uh, well, they announced that this web OS will be in all their devices, starting from printers and ending with, uh, well, desktop computers. It was announced in 2010, and a year later, they created the first tablet with WebOS and killed the whole line of WebOS devices after uh, two weeks. Mm, just because of the low sales. Well, mm, the idea was that they will reach the second, second position in the sales rating uh, somewhere near the new year. And just because uh, they killed the line and resellers were selling it with very, very low prices, something like $99 for one uh, device, they have fulfilled this goal and have reached the second position. And uh, visitors even managed uh, to flood um, Amazon, at least uh, British Amazon websites, and lay them down for several hours trying to buy it. It was real, um, well, a record. And uh, here is this web boss. Um, the most interesting from the interface point of view is so-called card layout. Uh, well, I think they were, they liked to play cards. So not um, cards from some um, library or not geographical marts, but playing cards. Uh, well, um, really interesting. A lot of round corners, uh, some very intuitive gestures, and uh, WebKit-based interface, not very fast, of course. It's a pity it's gone. I played with these devices and they were impressive. 9009, uh, one more device we have seen today. Yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> well, um, Nokia didn't think to create a high-end device, but they suddenly managed, uh, well, they have added some interesting features to their older line of MAMO internet tablets. The first one was the possibility to make phone calls. The other was hardware acceleration of the interface. It was the only device uh, in which you could see um, in the, some type of the overview mode or you may say, well, um, expose mode, uh, what is uh, going in your applications. It was and it, is, it still is really great device. And of course, it was possible uh, with some cheating to run desktop applications on it, just because it was still based on Debian. I myself played with OpenOffice. It was starting uh, for about two minutes. And, well, not a large screen, three inches with a half. It was difficult 
to press its buttons, of course, but the device itself was great. The same year, two versions of Android. One had tray with icons on the bottom. You could drag it up to access icons. At the same year, they had a different version without this feature. Um, uh, they added widgets to the desktop. And well, uh, starting from these two versions, Android is looking like some contemporary phones. Mm -hmm. uh, we may say that 201 is the final version of the graphic interface for small devices. The next year, the appearance of Apple iPad. First of all, it was the first successful tablet. Uh, not the first at all, because Bill Gates was a good was and still is a great fan of tablets. And he tried to create uh, tablet-like devices for years. Nobody bought them because uh, tablet uh, cost about $100 and had uh, nothing pen-friendly inside. It had Windows 98, then Windows 2000, then Windows XP, but well, Uh, so this was successful. The platform uh, was initially designed for a mobile phone. Uh, therefore, applications were, or had a rather simple interface to be uh, driven by fingers. Uh, not much buttons uh, in the toolbar, only several of them. It was much easier, and it was total skeuomorphing. And, well, uh, usability specialists still can't understand the roots of this success, because, well, everybody knew that skeuomorphs are terrible, and, well, people are using it, and even like it. Uh, frankly speaking, one reason was um, higher resolution of the screen, uh, nice colors, and the other reason was that uh, they were very clever, and scammer features were in implemented only way when they didn't brought the overall ex uh, didn't break the overall experience. Apple is known uh, to be very um, attentive, uh, to pay a lot of attention attention to details, and well. Uh, and you see here even a bookshelf borrowed from these Magic Cup devices of 1994. But this time people liked it. Um, nobody knows why. Because uh, on uh, E-inch readers, it's better to have a long list of books. Uh, and how much books will you see in such a bookshelf? Well. Mm, Maybe uh, owners of this device were not intensive readers. I think so. Mm -hmm. The next year, Windows Phone 7. Um, frankly speaking, this type of graphical interface was created in Microsoft a little bit earlier. Uh, the first roots can be seen in its desktop and cart encyclopedia uh, from 1998, maybe. Uh, at least some fonts and fonts. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the idea was highly bonded to scrolling. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, you had a big magazine, like a paper one, and looked into it through a window sized as a business card. You were always scrolling this window, as you see, on a screenshot. <clears throat> um, uh, from the useful things, or maybe useless, they introduced so-called live tiles instead of icons, and hubs, which were, frankly speaking, borrowed from, the, from Nokia N900s. Hubs uh, combining um, information from several applications. 
Well, but scrolling was terrible. Uh, for example, uh, you could see uh, in the very first version, you could see SMS message in very little, uh, in, very li uh, in very small font, or you should scroll it to left and to right. They even had, a vertic had no vertical scroll bar at this time. Oh, the second large slide, uh, the death of Nokia at least um, as we knew it. Well, um, they couldn't create a touch-friendly Symbian and started to make a lot of fuss. In 9008, they uh, bought TrollTouch to create a Qt-based uh, interface for their Symbian devices. In 2009, they were so much impressed by the popularity of N0-100s that uh, announced that the flagship platform will be Linux-based. In 2010, they uh, decided to create this Linux-based platform not on their own technologies, but on the Intel MIGO, um, well, not by Intel MIGO, but uh, on Intel Moblin version. Nobody knows why but with Qt everywhere instead of GTK. In 2011, <laughs> the Elopocalypse took place. Everybody remember it. They killed the Linux line and uh, announced jump to Windows Phone. And in the same year, they uh, produced uh, the first MIGA smartphone, which was really um, comfortable, really successful. They sold QT. And, well, in this, this year, the last year we are speaking about, uh, the year which will go to its end very soon, they, uh, the whole year they were trying to sell at least some of their Windows-based smartphones. Nobody wanted to buy them. They even had uh, to do some tricks like rising uh, prices for the N9 phone uh, with Linux, their own. It was not very helpful. <laughs> they are still trying, uh, maybe, well. Uh, two or three slides, I think two. Uh, Android 3.0 was the first tablet-oriented version of this operating system. Uh, they killed hardware buttons. They introduced mini windows for task switching. Uh, usability specialists like this feature very much, but uh, software makers are rarely using them. And, well, uh, dark skin was really um, intended uh, for tablets with the OLED screens it was uh, power, power saving, just because black pixels are not eating electricity. Well, and the last, the last slide, a good news. Um, let's look what uh, took place in some diagrams all this time. Uh, these uh, curves are for the smartphone markets, but other markets of portable devices are a little bit the same. Um, 9009 brought deaths for two projects, Qtopia and OpenMoco. No, not a real death maybe, but something close to death. Uh, Gnompal top environment, well, nobody knows what What's happening with it? Nobody remembers it. And nobody develops. Uh, the date of this uh, uh, stop is really unknown. Uh, Migo uh, have divided into two projects. Uh, the only fine uh, event we can see here is the open source web boss version and it's really good, but if looking at curves, the situation is really different. Uh, top portable operating system is 
Linux base, it's Android. Uh, it has about 65%. Uh, second large share has 25% maybe iOS, which is well, also based on uh, some open source technologies, at least on uh, free BSD code. Not open, but actively uses open source software inside of it. And all proprietary, uh, all operating systems which are really proprietary based, less than 5% maybe. Well, it's a uh, very bright situation in speaking about code, uh, but when uh, maybe open source community have won from the point of view of code, but uh, it's not so successful from the point of view of infrastructure because infrastructure of most popular uh, projects is totally proprietary. If speaking about Android market and Android uh, Google services, uh, so the same is situation with, well, well, I'm not speaking about the iOS. So uh, the conclusion may be that this year, we understood that we won battle for code, and perhaps we have a little bit different situation in the infrastructure, uh, from the infrastructure point of view. Well, it was the end. Thank you for your attention. Hope you like it. So we have plenty of time for a quick Q&A. Thank you for the presentation. I think you have maybe forgotten one pseudo tablet from 1993 called a Compaq uh, Concerto, maybe. Uh, what was the operating system? And Windows 3.14 uh, tablet uh, for pen computing. Yes, really? uh, just look at uh, uh, Wikipedia Windows for... Windows 3.1? Uh, Windows 3.1, so it was a year after... Um... Sorry, 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 I should find it. This yes, one? it's, it's <laughs> after this one and it is hmm. quite awesome because it has an uh, inductive uh, uh, stylus which works great like a Wacom tablet. And uh, I draw a few of the illustrations from my, uh, uh, with using this uh, 20 years old uh, computer. You had a nice experience with it? Mm -hmm. You had good experience? Well, what are your it, impressions? Mm -hmm. It, uh, well, I use it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I found it for 10, 10 euros uh, somewhere, and uh, wow, well, it's Windows, and I use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, I have to, to note that um, I uh, missed a little bit more than one device. I tried to uh, make accent for some substantial changes in the interface metaphor, and therefore I have postponed several interesting operating systems and several interesting devices, but well, it was rather long, you know. More questions, yes. Could you talk a little bit about Firefox OS? Oh, yes. Um, the idea um, is really interesting. Uh, the idea is uh, to gain some portion of infrastructure back. Um, from the interface point of view, it's nothing special. People who are, who are testing uh, Firefox phones in Brasilia, uh, first of all, uh, they suppose that they are playing with Android phone with some special Firefox themed icons. But the idea was uh, to create not an um, interface based on some web technologies like WebKit, there are uh, several other projects with the same approach, but to create uh, web standards for the mobile phone instead. Um, to create special IP, API, which could be used, a phone API, tablet API, which could be used from any browser. 
Uh, the first sign is that they uh, uh, proposed a vibrating API standard for the web browser. Well, uh, the first version had um, a little bit confusing name mm, from, well, <laughs> you may imagine. So uh, uh, they have renamed it to some more natural. But, well, uh, the idea is really interesting from the architecture point of view. Whether it's possible or not to uh, create a tablet browser which uh, needs nothing more. But, well, I hope they will be successful. I would like to see such devices. And uh, people from Mozilla are saying it is really faster than Android just because uh, well, JavaScript, but compiled, pre-compiled JavaScript and no uh, virtual machine. Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Do we have more questions? Yep. Hi, in your opinion, do you think Jolo Mobile is gonna create a successful product or you think it's just gonna get lost in the wash with all the other? Uh, what product? Uh, the stuff from Jola and Sailfish. Yeah, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, mentioned Jola on some slide with flames. No, yeah, I, not I, this one. The I, next. I saw that. I'm just wondering your opinion if you think it's going to work out or uh, if you think it's just going to be lost in the water. Take into, into account that it's an uh, open source based OS. I wish them success. But frankly speaking, I am not sure. Uh, because, you know, uh, it seems that market has no niche for it now. Maybe it's only version. Uh, maybe it's only, it seems only. Who knows? But maybe time is a little bit lost. A lot of people uh, came to Android while the El Apocalypse. Uh, a lot of people waited from Nokia. Uh, their next device and were totally disappointed by this act. So, well, I hope uh, that they will be successful. Well, I would like them to be successful, but I'm not sure they will be. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I like the idea. Mm -hmm. So, um, one thing you mentioned in, your, in, in the palm slides was the graffiti. Uh style of writing, um, yeah. this, this scheme. Mm -hmm. So, so one, one thing I very much liked about it at the time and reason why I even have it on my Android is uh, that you can look at what you're writing uh, on the text appearing without looking on, on, on a keyboard or something. So you just write blind and, and look at directly at the result. So I was wondering if you know any any other of the modern things which allow you to do that because all the virtual keyboards or it's Swift or whatever you always have to look at mm -hmm. at your typing and not on the result. Yeah, screen keyboards are full disaster. It's a pity, but well, uh, the only thing uh, uh, which has graffiti-like input I know is the Palm OS emulator for Android. <laughs> Sorry. More questions? Okay, it seems that's all. Thank you for your talk. And unfortunately, this was the last talk for today. And also this means EHSM is over two-thirds already. So uh, we should have a look at the schedule of tomorrow. Roll scroll.